disappointment. Last year and a couple of, well, I don't know, maybe the last year and a half has been disappointing. And I know that there's an air of, an air of disappointment in this body. I know because I've, I've been there. And I think it's because for me, and maybe this, maybe this reflects on you as well, it's because we forget that we're no longer our own, that we were bought with a price, and that we don't get a say anymore. And if we put it all in God's hands in that perspective that we're not our own and that we were bought and purchased by the precious blood of Jesus, then disappointment as a, as a, as a consequence has to go away. You can't be disappointed anymore if you don't have control, right? So let's get rid of the disappointment in our lives and put our hands or our lives back in proper position, which is in Christ. Amen. Thank you, sir. Turn me down just a little bit. Yeah, the other down is the dead stuff. <laughs> oh, dad, you're wonderful. Ante, son. I appreciate that, but I was looking for my son to say that. I know. All right. Go with me to Acts chapter 16. Go to verse 16, boss. Go go back a couple verses. <clears throat> Paul was summoned to Macedonia and uh in Philippi. And and Macedonia means burning and Philippi means warlike. Okay. I want you to I'm going to speak prophetically to you tonight, and so I'm going to try to try to give it to you. In a, good Lord, the youth has to stay in here all the time now. Um, <coughs> it feels like a Sunday. Um, I, I'm, I'm not. Tr- I'm not saying that. Prophetically, you can get weird, okay? And prophetically, you can get far out there, and prophetically, it can be a stretch, and. I'm not saying that you can't comprehend, but I want to convey what I feel like the Lord is saying, and I want to put it in a manner that we can all grasp hold, grab hold of, okay? So I, I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to make sure that I get across to you what I feel like the Lord is saying. But burning, uh, when you get on fire for God, we describe that as burning for the Lord. We, we talk about being on fire, and it's a burning, and it's... And, 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 the, just the whisper of Jesus moving, and we're, and we're there. When 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 we get saved, or we get radically uh, uh, changed, or something goes on in our life, we're at every prayer meeting, we're at every service, we're at everything. See, when 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 something great happens, we're there, and when it's really bad, and we really need God to move, those are the two times that we're on fire the most, because we're pushing and we're and, and we're moving forward, trying to get God to move on our behalf, or God has just moved, and we're excited about what He just did. Amen. If you got a, a, a if you got a big issue and God moves on that issue, you are loving some Jesus, amen. But also, uh, uh, if, if you're needing Him to to move and you feel like He's going to move, you also get into this place of warlike. You're like you're reading everything that's that that, that that's going to fight the enemy. You're 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 you know you're you're getting holy water, whatever it's going to take. You're getting warlike, amen. So those two things happen. And those two things are the major motivators for people in the church. Very few of us are moving steady, maturing, and reading, and developing, and growing. Let's be honest. Come on. Are you not going to be real with me tonight? Because maturing and growing is mundane and boring. And it hurts. Amen? Because you have to get up every morning and read, and you read three chapters and you don't get nothing 
And you still have to do it every day. And you have to pray every day. And, and, and you're praying for a certain situation. And God doesn't move on that situation. Amen? Am I the only one? Am I preaching to myself tonight? Okay, this is group participation. If you don't, I got Billy's got a gun. He'll start shooting you. <laughs> yeah, I'll get you motivated. One way or another. But I want you to notice, I want you to notice that God, uh, Paul is sent there. There's a fire. There's, there, 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 there's this building, and he goes. Let's go to verse uh, 14 now. Uh, sir, go back a couple more. Okay, now go to 13. All right. And on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to the women. I want to suggest to you that because prayer was going on, there was fire and it, they were beginning to build up and, and, and there was beginning to be warlike. OK, I, I want to suggest to you. And because of that, Paul is coming and he's going to begin to speak to them. And in the result of that verse, ne the next verse. Now, a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple from the city of Thia, whatever, who worshiped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. And when she had heard, and when she and her household were baptized, she begged us, saying, give that to me in the King James right there, because it, it's a little different. And when she was baptized, and her household, she besought us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Now, what I want to suggest to you is, what was happening is God was beginning to move, and there was a burning going on, and people were beginning to stand up and say, Wait, we've got to make some changes. And so Paul comes down there, and that's why the Holy Spirit sent Paul to go down there and start preaching. And so he starts preaching, and this woman gets saved. And not only her, she gets saved, and everybody else gets saved. And the reason why that happened, it was because prayer was going on. And I want you to tell you something. When we are moving into something, prayer is going on here. And when we are in dry and things are going rough and it's going down, we have very few that are going to prayer. Well, we've had a call to prayer and it's changed and people are turning around. So I'm expecting for the burning to come and I'm expecting for the war to come. Amen? Okay, come on. So you're going to have to help me with this. Closed on me. There we go. I'll preach it without it. Amen. There you go. Okay, so this is the thing. I want you to notice thing. It's a woman. That woman, why did it say a woman? Well, it represents woman is something that can birth something. Come on, listen, I'm, prof I'm speaking to you prophetically. What I mean is, is God is giving you a type and a shadow of something that goes on in your life. So what is representing is you. You're able to birth something into the kingdom. When you read the word and you get the seed of the word into you, you're able to birth something. So it's representing us, that we are the woman, we are the church, we're the bride. And it, when the word comes, it comes into us. And I want you to notice that, uh, go back to verse to where it's talking about Lydia. It says, it gives her name. And you know what her name means? It means a standing pool. Okay. There's water there, but it's not flowing. See, there's religion there, but it's not flowing. See, out of your belly shall flow a, ri a river of living water. And so what happens is as prayer goes up and fire begins and, and, and the warlike begins to start and the word of God comes on the place that is, there's, there's just water here. In other words, the spirit of the Lord has given you life, but you're not moving yet. It's just sitting in you. Then what happens is the word of the Lord comes on and then it's speaking to that still water that it will become a river of living water. In other words, you won't just be looking to get your stuff. You'll be looking to get somebody else's stuff. You'll not be looking to get your stuff out of stuff, out of things. You'll be looking to get other people out of things. You'll be looking around and seeing because, see, what God wants to do is he doesn't want to get you out of getting your bills paid and getting you uh, your wife and your husband fixed and your kids fixed. He's wanting you to get established in him so all that gets fixed, not just for that, 
So you can then t- be the example. You can be the Jesus to the, your neighbor and to the person at work. So you can take it and say, this is what the Lord has done for me. He doesn't want you to be a standing pool. He wants you to be a flowing river of life. Amen? All right, she's a seller of purple. Purple represents royalty. Just throwing that in there. You go wherever you want to with that one. Now, what, how do you sound, say that, that, that place? Thyatira. That means perfume, a sacrifice of labor. Paul comes to a prayer meeting and meets a woman and speaks to her, and she gets saved. She's a standing pool of water. She becomes a river of living water, and she's from a place of perfume. What is perfume to the Lord is incense, and what, uh, what is incense is our prayers and our sacrifices. It's a sweet-smelling savor. It's perfume to the Lord. So what he's saying is those are the things that operate in our lives that bring a perfume unto the Lord, okay? All right, now. All right, bringing it down to us. I'm getting excited because I feel like this is a word that's going to break some things in our life. Getting down to us. We come into church, and we got a need. And we're seeking God, and, and, and we hear something about God, and we know something about God. See, she's, she's a Jew, so she knows the things about God. That's why she has a standing pool of water. She's got the water, but she doesn't have life. It's not moving. It's stagnant. You ever been around stagnant water? But flowing water is life right see so you can be in religion and not have any life you can come to church every day uh, see we think of religious we think of the ones that go oh, oh, and do all those things we think of those religion but you know coming in here saying hello and how you doing getting your hug and sitting down and listen to me scream and holler and get up and walk out and being the same do you know that's religion Matter of fact, it's more religious than the alms people because the alms people are doing it to him only. You're doing it for their satisfaction, our satisfaction. It's true. I, I, you know, sometimes I'm preaching to get your satisfaction, to get you to like me. See, I'm as weak as you are. This is not a point at you. This is a point at us. See, it hurts me when you don't. People get mad at me because I don't speak to them. How many people come up and speak to me? Now, don't all you come, come talking to me after prayer, <laughs> at, at the service. Don't. I got people. Billy got a gun. Billy's got a gun. <laughs> but you come to church, and, 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 and there's this, this desire, and the word, and see, Do you know what Paul means? That means little. Really, Paul means little. It just takes a little word. A little word comes and speaks to her, and she gets saved, not only her, but her whole household. But see, the thing is, is, see, that's a sign of something's going on. If it's just you getting saved, I question that it's really about you and the Lord. I, I really think it's about your need. But if you get saved and people around you get saved, then it's you got a hold of Jesus. Amen? You got messed up. I, I know Annette, Annette was mean. Annette was a mean woman. Mean. Ugly. She got saved and she was loving people and being nice to people. People at work was going, who in the hell is that? She went to lay hands on this dude and he was backing up. Scared the living bejesus out of him. It changes you. All right, and you come in here and, 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 and you get that touch. You, you come in here. Now, 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 me preaching this, it may sound like I'm against you coming for a need, and that's not what I'm talking about. That, that's a, God creates or allows Christ. Don't create. Don't, no, he doesn't create. He allows crises in your life to get you to move. He allowed the people of Israel to go into bondage to get them to completely submit to him. Okay, so those things happen, and we come in here, and we begin to seek God. It may be a husband, it may be a wife, it may be children, it may be a job, it may be addiction, it may be whatever it is. That thing causes you to come. And see, what happens is, is when you get here, there's a little pool that begins into you, and it's stagnant. 
until the word comes on and then it begins to flow. And then you begin to sacrifice. And see, what happens is this, she's at the prayer meeting. She's seeking God and the word comes and then she gets saved because no notice that she's in the church. She's in the meeting. But it isn't until the word of God, the, the truth, Paul bringing the gospel, the Jesus to it. When Jesus comes to the situation and Jesus speaks, then she had life and her whole household got saved. They got baptized. They got immersed into Jesus. And see, the same thing happens to us. We may be coming for the, the thing or whatever, and then the word comes and it lights us up. It changes us forever. And it's awesome. And she says, look, if you found me faithful, come abide with me. See, what will happen if you really get messed up, if you really get touched by Jesus, whoever is associated with the church you in, all of the leaders in there, you're going to say, come abide with me. Come over to my house and speak to me and prophesy to me and preach to me and, and direct me and ex exhort me and correct me and do whatever. You're going to say, come abide with me. Because let me tell you something. If Paul comes to your house, I guarantee you he's going to do some correcting. See, most of you didn't laugh at that because you don't know about Paul. <laughs> Paul was a little fellow, but he was mean. You think I say, say it like it is. She, she didn't want just the prayer meeting. She didn't just want to go to church. She wanted church to come to her. See, something happened, and, 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 and my challenge to you is, is whenever the thing that happens to get you to go to the prayer meeting and it gets you to get the pool and then the word comes and gets you excited, awesome, great. We're excited about that, and you get on fire, and you want to abide, and you, you, you get up and you read. You read the devotional, you get your favorite devotional, you get your favorite TV preacher, you get the, the you, uh, who, whatever it is, you go through your process and you get hooked up with some Jesus and you abide in Jesus. And you are fired up. It, look, for me, it was Kenneth Copeland and Joyce Myers and Kenneth H Hagen and Charles Capps. Those four, no, Copeland wasn't there. It was one other person. Four of them. 15 minutes each, I was going through a divorce. She left me. Can you imagine? I couldn't. Four, I would leave work, go, go get my, my uh, uh, sandwich, and sit in the car and listen to four of them. And then I would get up early in the morning, and i read, and i pray. And then that evening after I ate and I did all my stuff, I would go in my bedroom, and, and I would read and pray and, and, and seek the Lord. Six months straight. Day in and day out, I did that. Friday night, I would leave come down from Lubbock, come down to Temple, and, and, and spend time with my daughter, go to a church, but still do the same routine. Get up in the morning, read, pray. Go to bed, read, pray. On the weekends, I listened to messages that weren't, because that was, that was during the week. Six months straight, nothing fell. Because I was seeking, I was warlike, I was trying to save my family. Now, that's happened in many times and many a avenues of my life. On, on the good side, on the war side, on, on, on the fire, the burning, I, I got hit with the Holy Ghost. I got baptized in the Holy Ghost, and I, I couldn't. I had I, 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 everything that I said was about Jesus. Everything I watched, everything I did was about Jesus, and 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 that's me, and that's that was my life. And it, it, yours, it may be your Jesus may just be Air One, okay? And 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 that sounds like kind of kind of condescending and, and belittling. And I don't mean it to be, because it's, it's your fire, and it's what goes on with you, and that's where your fire is burning, okay? I'm not trying to be ugly, but I challenge you to get past their one, okay? Because mine was, in the beginning, was just a little Baptist church, Sunday mornings, and that's all I got. No, I listened to rock and roll, black... Uh, 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 back in black uh, A-Track Y'all don't know about the kids uh, The A-Track Back in black CD I mean uh, uh, A-Track And, and, and uh, what was the What was the other one Sitting at a bar stool Come on you rockers Oh no thank you Those two I, I, I would drink and party and do all those And then Sunday morning was my church time But that was, that was my church thing And I was giving God all my all at that time 
whatever that thing is and wherever you are, yours is great, yours is small, it's a fire, it's a fire. Last March, we had a wildfire coming into this place. I began to prophesy from this spot right here, and I felt fire on my hands. I had three people not knowing what was going on with me came up and said, there's fire on your hands. I fell out in the spirit twice. I talked in tongues like I had never talked before. It came from a place. I don't know. And I knew at that moment that God was going to do something great in this place. I had full expectation that we were going to be another Brownsville or, or Toronto. I just knew it with all my heart. And as I've told you, if you've been here on Sunday, it was one thing after another, after another. But that was a major fire. And I don't know where you're at, and I don't know what you've had, and, I don't, and, and that fire may not have affected you. But I know it affected a lot of people in here. My challenge to you is, is what happened after verse 14. Because it's immediately, uh, 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 immediately that Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And it's uh, immediately after you get that word and after you get that fire in you and you want to change and you want the word to abide in you and you want the man of God to abide in your life. See, I'm not talking about me coming over to your house, but everything I say, you grab hold of and it's the gospel. Anything, anybody else in this, in the, in this uh, 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 leadership in this church, what, they are the best thing since sliced bread. Every time they walk in, there are angels. They are awesome to you. You think they're the greatest people in the world. You want to abide with them. And it's not because of them, because most of us have issues. And you know those issues. And most of us are not very good looking. Well, the rest of them aren't. But it's not because of attractiveness. It's not because of that. It's because of the anointing. Okay? In, in, in all seriousness, it's not. I can't speak worth a darn. I don't know why I'm a preacher. My tongue gets going faster. No, my mind gets going. One of them's faster than the other. That's all I know. <laughs> One's slower than the other. That's probably the best way. <laughs> Don't say which one. But it's not us. It's the anointing. It's the glory of God. It's what's being made apparent. And it's a fulfilling in you. And it's a desire because it originated from us. Go to the classes and those teachers in there are awesome and This is the best revelation you ever heard, the best prophecy, the best praise and worship team ever. All the music is awesome. Can't play a bad song for nothing. The loudness doesn't bother you at all. But this is what immediately happens. Verse 15. Verse 16. Now it happened as he went to prayer, as we went to prayer. Now, notice that they have to continue in the prayer. Notice they have to continue in the prayer. God came, the word came, she got saved, the whole household saved. Why do we need to pray anymore? There's a key there, folks. There's a key to what God is saying. You get to keep going because it's not just her and her household. It's the neighbor's household and the neighbor's household and the neighbor's household and the street household and on down the line. And as they're going to prayer, a certain slave, a girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. It came to pass 
That means to generate. Go back, please. In the King James, it says, and it came to pass. And what that means is it generates. And what I challenge you with is prayer, the word of God following, and people getting saved generates a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination to come. And I challenge you that that spirit, though we've preached on this very topic before, has come again and has been here for a while. Because there's a lot of people with a lot of things that have happened and God's been great, but the spirit of divination has come into this house. And I am pointing it out I'm declaring over it, it's done. And as I declare as the, ho- uh, as, as the pastor of this house, I'm declaring it, you have to back it. Now, when it says the spirit of divination, it's not divination, it's Tathu, which is where you get Python. Python... How does a python kill its prey? It wraps itself around it and begins to squeeze it. And every time you take... Sorry, I've got the spitting anointing today. Every time you take a breath or you breathe out to breathe back in, it tightens up. So what it does, it doesn't crush you. What it does is it takes the breath of life out of you. That's the way it kills you. I want you to notice that as a damsel, it seems innocent. It seems it's a little slave girl. See, she's a slave girl to the master and not the master, a master. And what I want to show you is it's, a, it's seeming innocent and it's seeming uh, very uh, 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 unassuming. It seems like it's not that big of a deal. It seems like it's not that... What can that just little girl do? Seems so uh, unassuming, but she, see, the thing is, is it, it's, not, it's not the package that it comes in. It's the spirit behind it, and we get focused on the package. It's the spirit behind her. Now, as when I say about getting focused on the package, those that get discernment, we get focused on the package instead of the spirit. But what's those that are not discerning and don't watch out, they're focused on the package and thinking that is so innocent and unassuming and that there's no way that it can do me any harm. And the problem is, as I'm preaching this, you're thinking about people. And my point to you is, is it's not about the person. It's about what's being said. In order to prevent them from bringing salvation to other people, she was distracting and annoying, provoking. See, when you don't know that you need saving, the enemy pronounces what is being done. She's mocking. She's saying, these men are bringing you salvation. You think that she's proclaiming the gospel? No, she's mocking them. Oh, you think you're bringing salvation to them. That's the tone of the mocking. And see, when you get your problem fixed, the thing is, is you come in here and when you sit down and you get your problem fixed and you start doing the the routine and the religious thing, you think you are perfect now and you're ready to start running the church. I, 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 I did it myself. But I deal with it all the time. People get saved, ha, have been saved two weeks, three months, been here a year, learned a little bit, and they think they know how to run this church or run another church. And we expect a doctor to go to school for eight years to practice medicine on us and notice that it's practicing, it's not performing We have no qualms about having to be trained in our work. But we think just because the Spirit moved on us, we are now qualified to do everything in the church. I don't know what it is about the church. We've created this environment. I don't know. 
I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about the church, the whole church. And that's not what this is about because this is not about you doing that. It's about all of us doing that. We think that we know what we're doing, and therefore we think that the innocent little damsel is innocent. And so we don't know. See, we're looking for the demonic to come in and destroy the church. And it's the little foxes. Now, I'm not talking about the church. I'm not talking about the church, you individually, each person. See, what happens is, is the Lord moves on your half. You get, you, get, you get touched and you come in here and you don't know that you have other areas that need to be saved. You don't know that your finances need to be saved. You don't know that your character needs to be saved. You don't know, you know that your household is about to be attacked and, and the enemy is coming to kill, steal, and destroy your house because you stepped into the kingdom. You have no clue about that, and therefore you are innocent. And therefore, when people begin to speak things into your ear, now let me uh, clarify that. It's not people, it's the spirit behind it. But when people begin to speak to you, you begin to think that it's okay, and you allow the mocking to go on because you don't know that you need to be saved. You hear what I'm saying? You don't know what you, we think we know. We don't know what we think we know. And so, therefore, when the mocking's going on, we have no clue that mocking's going on. This is how the mocking goes on. Why is she wearing what she's wearing up there singing? Why are they singing that song? Why does he use those words? Why does he say that word? What makes him think he can say that word? Why do they talk about that subject? Why don't they ever say hello to me? Why can't I do this? What I'm trying to tell you is, is Satan's telling you, oh, you're the man of God? Oh, you're bringing the word of God? Oh, these men, I, listen to me. I'm not talking about this church. I'm not talking about any church you go into. This is not about you being bad. This is not about me getting on to you. This is about the whisper that comes into your ear. And what is going on is that the spirit of divination, the python is coming in to squeeze the life out of you. Because what I'm preaching to you, whether you like me or not, is life. It's breath. He says every word that proceeds out of the word of God, out of the mouth of God is the bread of life, right? So what comes out of our, 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 my mouth is the word of God, and it is breathing breath to you. When God spoke to you, when he brought you into life, he breathed into Adam's nostril, didn't he? He brought breath, right? And so he brought breath, and breath brings life. So when I speak words of life to you, it's bringing life to you, and it changes your situation. And because we don't know, we then mock it because we don't know we need to be saved. Okay, you understand? Now, now listen to me. I, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about all of us. I'm sitting there. I'm the, I run the show. And she does something that I don't like, and I don't want it to go that way. And I get irritated because I think it needs to be this way. Or that way. I've mocked what God's doing because she has submitted herself. And even if she's wrong, she submitted herself unto the Lord and said, Lord, show me. Okay? So this is not about you. This is about us. And it's about the spirit of Python coming in to destroy you and squeeze the life out of you. And cause you to not stop growing. And what he talked about being disappointed. And what happens is, is the whisper comes and they said, oh, that's really the truth. That's really the man of God. Oh, really, there's awakening. Oh, really, there's healing coming. Oh, really, this is that. Oh, that blah, 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 blah. Oh, you're going to get changed. Oh, you, your, your whole household is going to be changed. Oh, you're going to be saved. Look at the Chavarias. Everybody, the whole household got saved, didn't it? 
We're working on it. We still got a couple left. Ca- started with one. One big ugly one, but one. <laughs> Is he here tonight? No. Aww. <laughs> Start with Lorinda. Then the kids. Then James. Lorinda came to my house, chewed me out, told me what I was doing wrong. She'd been saved two years. She's going to tell me how to run the church. Tell me where I was missing it. It was two years. <laughs> Give her credit. Even if it wasn't, it was two. Tell me what's going on. She's just chewing me out one way or another. But she worked through it. See, the thing is, is that this is not about that it's not about me because see most of it's not me i'm just the central focus point because i get everything gets focused up here when i start to preach what you don't understand is he's doing it to each one of you to each other he's in your ear about your brother and 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 that's the brother that's bringing the word that the one that sits beside you and tells you what you need to hear that's the brother that really loves you the one that pats you on the back and tells you everything nice and sweet, that you better run. You better run. So my challenge to you tonight is, is what's squeezing the breath out of you? What's whispering in your ear? See, what happened when God moved on you? And you were on fire. Think about that moment. Now think about all the garbage that you got attacked with. Someone offended you. Someone did something you didn't like. You started hearing stuff being said about certain people. You didn't like that. You begin to hear things about the church that you didn't like the way it was going. People started talking. You found out people were talking about you. Am I lying? And what happens is it begins to squeeze the life out of you. And you no longer want to abide. I don't want to be around them. I can get that at work. Right? But see, it's not about us. We're all human. We all make mistakes and we're all going to we're all going to talk about each other's dirty laundry. That's not what it's about. God's trying to I mean Satan's trying to stop her and the household getting saved. That's the point of it. Not look, look some of you need to get cleaned up and what they're saying is true. Take the word and correct it. The point is, is when that word comes, it begins to strict and it begins to take the life out of us. And that begins to take the breath out of us. And that breath in Genesis 2, 7, it talks about the creation and the rebirth. See, what happens is no longer you don't see. Let's say you came for your household or your 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 marriage. Well, your finances is messed up. And, and, And you you can't rub two nickels together. And, and you got a house payment you can't afford and a car payment you can't afford. And every time you turn around, they're about to possess everything or repossess everything. Possess one or two, <laughs> something, it don't matter. What The thing is, is what will happen if you stay here and you abide. Now, listen, it's not about, understand, it's not about me. If you abide, look, go somewhere else if that's what you feel like you need to do. But Abide. Stay long enough for the church, the word that's coming to that house to penetrate you and get your household saved. Because if it's just your marriage and your kids are screwed up and your finances are screwed up, that's not what God wants. God wants your whole household saved. He wants your pocketbook saved so you can help other people. 
And so that comes in and it begins to choke and all you get is your husband. Look at him. Is that all you want? You better hush. How many wants to be able to write a check? You get an unction and how many wants to be able to write a $500 check check and just give it to somebody? How many wants to, when you hear about someone's house burning down, that you can go buy them all furniture? A lot of you are saying amen, but y'all are like, that's pie in the sky. You're getting choked. I can't go there. (coughs) What's his name? What was his name? You know who I'm talking about? Uh, The funny guy. Louisiana. Jesse, Jesse Duplantis, he's talking about his daughter choking. He was talking about his daughter. He was, hey, sweet, how, how much does how much how much the furniture cost? Ah, oh, blah 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 blah. Well, I want to bless. No, daddy, no, daddy, no, daddy. It was thousands of dollars. And twice she did that, and he talked about it. she was choking. She couldn't handle it. Finally, she learned. He walked in there. How much does it cost? It costs this much, daddy. You can write the check. Go ahead. See, when you hear what you can have, don't choke on it. And see, the thing is, is we don't we we get we choke on it, not receiving it to ourselves. But we also get choked on it. We also get choked when someone comes in and starts downplaying and start tearing up the what's going on. And you don't then abide. See, when you have an issue with what's going on here, you will not receive from here. You won't, you won't receive. And, and if, I was, if I was up here giving, uh, giving away $10,000, you would be lined up receiving it. But if you said one word against me, I wouldn't give you the $10,000. Most of you would keep your mouth shut, right? Get your $10,000. Okay, it's the same thing with what's going on in the body of Christ. Satan's coming and is whispering, and you got yourself saved, and now you've got brothers and sisters, you've got something else that needs to be done. And Satan's whispering, and he's talking in your ear, and he's choking the life out of what can happen over here. He's choking the life out of somebody being born again. It's that important. 2 Timothy 3.16 talks about the inspiration. God breathed. How many knows the same thing they knew last year and doesn't know anymore? Did you stop progressing? Do you know more than you did five years ago? If you don't, Python came in and choked you. John 20, 21 and 22, power. To move in the power of God. How many of us walk in the power of God that we want to? How many want to raise the dead? How many want to open the ear, open the eye, op- uh, open the tongue? How many wants to move in the gift of healing? How many wants to go speak to someone and they're hooked up on drugs and you deliver the gospel and they're set free? That's life. That's breath. If we're allowing Python to come speak into our ear. It chokes the life out of us. We no longer have life. In Ezekiel 37, 410, to restore, he's speaking to the dry bones, and breath came into him. How many know some destroyed lives? How many know some broken down, addicted lives? See, this is not just, I, see, I, I, I talk so much about the church. And what about your lives? What about the people that you know that are destroyed and need the gospel? When that spirit comes in, it's not just choking here. It's choking you being the church out there. It's squeezing on us. And number one, you got to see that it's not innocent. It's not just a little damsel. It's a spirit. It's a snake. 
you got to see that whatever that is that begins to whisper in your ear, it's a snake and it's there, not just a little, little grass snake. It's a big python and it's there to squeeze the life out of you. And you got to get tired of it. Paul was walking and constantly she was mocking and constantly she was mocking and constantly she was mocking and constantly she was mocking. And con- oh, you got the you got the word of the Lord. Oh, you come to bring us salvation. Oh, you got what we need. Oh, you got what you what we need. I'm tired of you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. That thing left and it upset everybody in their in their apple cart because she could no longer bring forth fruit to her master. So how many of you no longer wants to let fruit come to the master of divination and no longer be able to produce in this house, in your house, in your workplace, wherever you are? So stand up, let's go into worship, and let's begin to praise him and begin to rebuke everything that comes into your ear that you know that's not of God. Go back and look at all the conversations. What's the damsel that needs to be rebuked? And I'm not talking about going and rebuking people. I'm talking about praying for them that they stop, that you stop listening. And maybe you, it's coming out of your own mouth. Y'all look mad. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. I just set you free. I just spoke the word of God that's going to set you free. Look. Look, I know I use the church because that's the easiest. Look at your own life. Look in your life who needs to be saved in your life. Look at your finances. Do they need to be changed? Look at your job situation. Does it need to be changed? I'm not talking about getting out because most of you are there for a reason. Maybe what's going on is you're focusing on tearing down the boss when you're supposed to be in there building him up. Life is coming. (laughs) Lord, help her in Jesus' name. Go ahead and get the lights just at the back one there. Where's Satan choking the life out of your your situation? Now, look, if there's some stuff in this church, look, the point of this message was not to get y'all to stop talking about people in the church because I don't, I'm not necessarily thinking that that's the issue. My, my issue is that you're discouraged because life breathes out of these situations. And what's happening is that, that the foxes are coming, that the, the, the python is whispering in your ear and it's taking life out of you that you can't speak life into your situation. Your household, healing, your kids. And then if you get that clear it'll clear up here amen come on so as we begin to search the lord and pursue him i want you to seek him and ask him lord where are the damsels in my life and where do i need to rebuke it and i just want you to make a declaration and say tonight Look, we laid the groundwork. I prayed over it all day. I spoke it. The intercessors are going to pray for it. And we're gonna, and I've rebuked it. And no more in this house. No more in this house, okay? No more in this house. Come on. No more in your house. No more in your house. I have made a
persuaded. I am persuaded. I am persuaded. Come on, I have made my choice. pass this off as this is somebody else. Don't pass this off that this was for someone else. Don't get distracted by Satan right now thinking about gossip and turmoil and and back, back, back fighting. I as pastor have watched the battle rage and I've watched people suffer and I've watched my own personal trials and I sought God today and he said this is what is killing the people that little damsel in your life that's mocking the word of God however it comes about in your life I can't tell you what it is only you know and God will show you if you don't. But seek him and let him speak to you and let him address it. Because I know you and I know that you've got financial problems and I know that you've got family members that aren't saved and I know you've got sickness and I know you've got battles at work and I know the struggles that you go through and my heart's cry is not for, for, for us to have a perfect church. My heart's cry is for us to see what the Lord says and do the best we can with what he says. And I want you to get it so you can get past where you're at, that you may have a change in your life and you won't just have salvation of your soul to go to heaven. You'll have salvation of your finances and you'll have salvation of your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. You know, we pass on alcoholism and we pass on a drug addictions and we pass on uh, depression and we pass on uh, mental illness. Let's start passing on the, the blessings of God. Let's start passing on prosperity. Let's start passing on a godly relationship. Let's start passing on to our children. Let's teach them the ways of the Lord and then teach it to our grandchildren and our great grandchildren. And let's start living long enough to see our great, great, great grandchildren and start allowing God to bring the blessing and the promises in our lives. So what is the damsel in your life? Please get tired of it. Please get tired of it and rebuke it and cast it out so it will no longer have power and it will no longer be able to bring riches to the master. What is it in your life? Follow Jesus and let him show you. It could be little, it could be big, it could be one, it could be a thousand. Only you know. Let God show you. I want you to be free. I want to be free. There's damsels barking at me all the time. And it's time for me to start rebuking instead of agreeing and whining. Amen? 
Come on, what is it in your life? Raise your hands. Raise your hands and say, I'll follow, Lord. I will follow, Lord. I'll follow, Lord. I'll let you show me. What is it in my life? Where's the damsel, Lord? Is it a friend? Is it a thought process? Is it a show? Is it a habit? Is it a mindset? Is it a religious thinking? yes today, Lord. We say yes to you, Lord. We say yes to you, Lord. Tonight, spirit of Python, escort yourself out of this house. Spirit of Python, escort yourself out of their houses, out of their minds, and out of their lives. Today, today, come on, come on, one last thing, I want you to write down what you believe. seeking God on those damsels, I challenge you to let him speak to you though about those, write them down, rebuke them. But then I want you to start writing down what you believe, what you think's okay, what you think's not okay, what your faith is. And I want you to go to the Lord and say, show me, Lord. Because those are some damsels too. Those thought processes choke and keep us from grabbing some things and promises that we can have. And I challenge you today to let God show you. Come on. One last time. One last time. Will you follow him? Will you follow it? Will you see the receive the word of the Lord? Will you receive what God spoke to you tonight? Will you say yes? Will you say yes? their Lord and Savior and would like to know him as we sing this course one more time. Pastor James is right here and he'll lead you in the sinner's prayer and introduce you to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords.
you join hands. The person that you have hands with right now, I want you, some of you is left and right, so you got double duty. I want you to pray for that person this week. That whatever damsel in their life that they will stop listening to and they've rebuked it tonight and it will not come back. And then I want you to pray that they be empowered with the Most High God to bring breath of life to whatever is dead in their situation. If that's family members, if that's finances, if that's a marriage, if that's children, whatever that issue is, I want you to begin to believe God for that and begin to pray as they have spoken to the thing that's trying to squeeze life out. We're going to begin to speak life over them. We're going to begin to speak life over their situation. We're going to begin to speak life over their whatever is dead in their life that needs resurrection and needs life, breath of life coming from God in them, okay? You are the man of God. You are the Paul in the situation, and you're bringing forth the word that will speak the breath of life to them in their situation. So look who's on your left and look who's on your right, and please take it with all sincerity and all seriousness. Be responsible and begin to pray and intercede for them. Can you do that for me this week? All right, let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we lift up the person beside us. We lift up their hand and we raise it up to you and we raise this person up to you and we ask for you to bless them. We ask you to help them with their damsel. We ask them to give them the strength to rebuke it and cause that spirit to leave that it shall no longer bring profit to the master in their lives, that it shall no longer bring profit and bring death to them. And Father God, we speak life to them. And whatever death that they have, life cometh, life cometh, life cometh to that situation. We say yes, we say yes, we say yes. Come forth in Jesus' name. Life, breathe life, Lord. Breathe life, breathe life. Breathe life, Lord. Breathe on it, Lord. Breathe on it, Lord. Breathe on it. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.
back up okay listen my son from from the day he was born he was 10 pounds and his lungs were underdeveloped yeah Satan has tried to take his breath away he's fought allergies all his life and prophetically I felt like the Lord spoke to me tonight that it's 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 a sign that Satan's trying to take away the word that comes forth out of his mouth he's next in line and what is on me and his mother he will receive a double portion to receive and minister and, 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 and to bring forth the gospel but Satan's done everything he can to destroy him destroy what is going on in his life he's a PK Satan's gonna come after him ten times worse but I felt like the word the word of the Lord spoke to me and said those that are having asthma attacks either it, it uh, and, and the cedar that's going on the breath is trying to be taken away out of you and it's not it may be in your life or it may be somebody else in your life but it may it's a representation of the gospel coming forth and them speaking life in a certain situation big small it doesn't matter if you have those things i want you to come to the elders and the pastors up here wendy come up here too uh and and and, and, and uh i don't know where you're at baby come up here and, 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 and if you have that let them anoint you let them pray over you and, and I believe that you're going to bring forth life. Either in, it, it's going to come forth in you or, you're, or the attack is on you, but it's somebody for your, in your family. So I want you to come up here and get prayed for, okay? Come on, bring it back up.
Jerry, I feel like the Lord said he wants you to give voice to what he's placed inside of you. I've been sitting up here trying to figure out what he meant, but I feel like it's something that he's going to place inside of you. It's an intercession, and he wants you to speak it out and to begin to declare it, to bring forth some things in the kingdom, not only in your own household, but also in this household, but also for some people outside. You're going to declare those things in their, in their lives, and it's going to come about. You're going to stand as an intercessor on the wa watchman on the wall and begin to warn and begin to declare. You're not going to you're going to see it, see out there and see what's to come forth, and you're going to declare that it comes into their lives. It may be prosperity, it may be salvation, or whatever. But the Lord's going to be, begin to show you. But He wants you to declare it. He wants you to begin to speak it. Don't just think it. He wants you to verbalize it. He wants you to verbalize it in your house, in your prayer closet, when you're praying, and God's giving you those things. He wants you to speak it out and begin to declare. I want you to look everywhere. Do you know about declaring? I used to think it was wrong. But if you begin to look in the Word of God and it shows you about declaring, I want you to begin to declare that and begin to speak it. It puts it into motion and it brings it about. And I want you to declare it until it comes forth. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on. One really got saved tonight. They didn't just halfway get saved. They didn't kind of get their toes wet. They jumped all the way into the pool. They jumped in the deep end. Amen. It's time we started jumping in the deep end. Stop easing in like my mom used to do and get in a swimming without getting her hair wet. Uh, Omar did that too. You need to jump in, just dunk them. If they're in the water, go by and just dunk them. Amen. Just begin to pray the Holy Ghost on them and just to get them saturated in Jesus' name. Begin to sneak up behind them and lay hands on them. Don't lay hands on their butt, on their back. Lay hands on their back and begin to pray and begin to speak the Lord over them and watch the Holy Ghost come on them and watch things change in their life. Get sneaky. Get stealth. Amen. 
Begin to speak the life into people's worlds. Break, speak life. Speak life. Amen. Whoa, I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Come on. Prophesy over that baby. Prophesy over him. Prophesy over him. Declare the word of the Lord. try to finish early and y'all make it go longer. I don't hear y'all whine about going long anymore. Y'all just keep demanding and pulling on the Holy Ghost. God is good and God loves you a whole bunch. Go tell somebody. Go tell him. Go tell him. Y'all be blessed. I'm done. We will not.